everyone, Coach Carmen here from The Happy Balanced Life. And today I wanted to come on to share some tips, 10 tips, to help you sort of control your eating or your consumption of food or intake. So I think, you know, we all know that in the last decade, we have really started to consume more and more. Bigger is better. And I don't think when it comes to food or your health, that is the case. Everything is bigger when bombarded with all kinds of commercials and marketing telling you that bigger is better, right? Upsize everything. But when it comes to your health, you really want to be monitoring what you're intaking and how much you're eating. It's all moderation. So this year, instead of starting with any crazy fad diets, let's just talk about some tips that'll help you take baby steps to improve how much you're intaking and help you with your wellness. Let's get right into it. So tips for controlling your food intake. Let's talk about your plate. The plate that you use to eat matters. Believe it or not, sometimes we look with our eyes and think that we are eating a small amount and we don't realize how much we're actually consuming. So plate your food. And what I mean by that is if you ever get takeout like Chinese or something like that out of a container, you can eat and eat and eat without understanding how much you're really consuming. But when you plate your food, it gives you an opportunity to see how much you're intaking. And I like to use the Chinese um, rice box because when you see the small rice box, it looks like I could eat it all by myself. But truly, when you take it out, you will realize really quickly there's enough there for four people, right? Um, same thing with ice cream. Sometimes if you don't scoop it out, it looks like you could eat the whole thing. So make sure that you are plating your food. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few more tips. The second thing is to use a smaller plate. The truth is that most of us eat in plates that are like 10 to 12 inches. That's what's you know sold out there. And if you would just reduce your plate size, because they do sell them smaller, to an 8 to 10 inch plate, believe it or not, you would be consuming less calories. They say about 23%. So that's a way to save, sort of tricks your brain. The third thing is to measure your food. Yes, measure your food. If you're home, pay attention to the serving size. Is it half a cup? Is it a full cup? Um, and that really will help you realize too. I started doing that a while ago with rice, pasta, things that are starchy, and I was shocked at how much I was eating. For the most part, most of us eat more than we should, especially if we eat out, right? They give us large portions, it's on our plate, and we eat it all. So that's a second tip. One thing that I do in restaurants sometimes if I have, want to have my favorite pasta or my favorite meal, I still want to enjoy myself, right? But it's about modification, moderation, excuse me. So what you do is you ask for a to-go container and you eat half of it and you put the other half in a to-go container. So you're already mentally thinking, I'm only going to consume what's on my plate. Just a pro tip. The third, the fourth thing, excuse me, is to read your labels. And I'm going to give you an example. This is a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Okay. It's non-dairy. Um, and if you read the label, you would be shocked to find out that this has an additional 35 grams of sugar, which is 66% of your daily intake, 66%. Now that's only for two thirds cup. That's the serving size. In the past, I could eat one of these pints all by myself. Okay. And that, that, this would be like hmm, three servings. Okay. And I would eat it all. So think about how much sugar you're intaking if you do not pay attention to the labels. Now I'm talking about sugar because it's really critical for us, but it could be fat. It could be calories in other foods. It could be sodium, whatever it is that you are looking out for, for your wellness, make sure that you read your labels. It makes a difference. Then um, I would say, look for the serving size. I just mentioned that because that's important. This particular ice cream and most ice creams are not a full cup or a bowl like we we like to serve ourselves they literally are like two-thirds cup or half a cup is what equals the amount of calories fat sugar etc that's on there next I would say don't drink your calories and I learned this a really long time ago stay away from drinking soda juices you know things like that with your meal and um, even when you Think about people that count their calories they often tend to forget 
their beverages, right? They don't count them. So they may have like a sugary drink or a Starbucks coffee or Dunkin' Donuts coffee. They may have a soda or, you know, a Gatorade if they were working out and they don't count those calories for some reason, but they definitely have calories. So don't drink your calories. Try to consume that. Drink water as much as you can. Tea, try to drink things that are not sugary. And if you have to have that for a treat, make sure that you track that as something that you're consuming so that you can understand how much you're intaking. Next, uh, balancing your food. So this is interesting, but I want to show you what the real food plate should look like. So let's just say that this is a regular size food plate. This is just to give you an example. You should have half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables or vegetables or a salad. And then the other half should be split into your protein, which could be any meat, fish, tofu, and your grains, rice, you know, pasta, bread, whatever it is. So think about that. If you can fill half of your plate with vegetables or salad, and then a, you know one, the other quarter with prote protein and the other quarter with grains, you are talking about a balanced meal here, okay? Instead, a lot of us will have a ton of carbs and a few pieces of meat, right? And no healthy fruits or vegetables, which is part of the issue. That is the sad diet, the standard American diet. So if you really want to work on your health and wellness and what you're consuming, try this. This really works. Then I would say um, eat slower and sit down. And this is another issue here in America. We eat in our cars. We eat standing at the counter. We go through the drive through and we eat while we're driving. None of this is good for you, right? So taking your time to sit down and eat without distraction, that really matters. That means sitting down, eating your food, taking a few bites, putting your fork down. And let me make it even simpler. This has happened to me in the past. Have you ever sat down with a box of cookies, like Oreos, for example, and you're watching TV and eating and all of a sudden the whole, a whole sleeve of it is gone? Yeah, guilty, right? So I now take a few things and put them aside and eat them as a snack. Same thing can happen with popcorn or ice cream. You just keep consuming because you're not paying attention to how much and you're distracted by whatever else is going on. And then I would say uh, count your calories if that's something you're into. If you eat really good, healthy, whole foods, salads, vegetables, um, fish, you know, chicken, lean meat, stuff like that, you, you should be fine. But if you are not used to understanding how much you should be consuming, you should definitely count your calories. Um, and there's online calculators. I like MyFitnessPal just because I've been using it for a really long time. I love it because what it does is it gives me an opportunity not only to see the calories, but it gives me other things like my sodium intake, my fat intake, my carb intake, um, you know, anything like that that I'm watching. And it'll change colors. It'll also show me how much I'm consuming when it comes to calories. And because you can enter your goal weight and what you're trying to um I'll say what your what your goal is, then it's going to show you if you're on the right track or not, right? It's going to show if you over ate or if you under ate, if you still have calories left. It also counts your water intake and your exercise if you take time to enter that as well, which is fantastic. And then what I would say about counting calories too is that Unfortunately, I can't tell you if you're wondering, like, Carmen, how many calories should I have? There's a lot of variables here. Are you working out, um, you know, your weight, your height, your gender, all of that physical activity matters. So that's why these tools, these um, apps that you find now online to count your calories are fantastic because they sort of do the work for you. And when you start counting calories or at least looking at your labels and figuring out your food, you realize really quickly that some things that you think are healthy really are not. So I'll give you a really quick example. Many years ago, a nutritionist was asking me about my breakfast. And when I explained to her the yogurt that I was eating, she said, let's look at the label. And I didn't realize how much sugar was in the yogurt that I was eating and how bad it was for me. So I had to make a switch. And now I really pay attention to the labels to make sure that I'm consuming either plain yogurt where I can add something in or Icelandic, Icelandic or Greek yogurt that is lower in sugar and higher in protein. Okay, that's just a simple one. Then almost... Um, Almost at the end here, so let's stop snacking whenever possible, unless you really, really need to. I would say you, if you ate a meal that is high in protein, low in carbs, and high in vegetables and fruits and things like that, that is filling, you should be okay until your next meal. But if you eat something light or you don't eat enough, then you may want to snack in between. 
if you can stop that or slow it down, it's going to help you. We live in abundance. Okay. And we sometimes are just bored and we just eat because we're bored. For example, when I'm doing schoolwork, I like, for some reason, I like to have something to eat. I like to snack while I'm doing that. I know some people, while they're watching TV, they have to snack. They want popcorn, cheese, and crackers, or wine, or whatever. Th those are habits that need to be broken in order for you to have better health. And finally, a pro tip. So this is, I just want to show you because I forgot to mention this. I do use a scale just because I like to measure my meats, my protein, because it keeps my macros in order for me. Because of the type of workouts that I do, I want to make sure I'm getting enough protein and that helps me sort of keep on track. I want to make sure that I'm having like four ounces of, you know, meat, for example, um, then that's important to me or six ounces of fish that I don't go over. And for the most part, I can look it out and know that I'm eating the palm of my hand about that size and the thickness too, um, when it comes to any type of protein. But if you don't know that, if you didn't know that and you want to measure and you don't have a good handle on, it, handle on it yet, I would say go ahead and weigh your food or measure it, okay? And then finally, just another pro tip is we if you are the type of person who likes a snack, especially if you're at work and you get that like three o'clock lull where you feel like you got to run to the vending machine, then bring your own snacks, okay? So you have control. These are just these, um, these little baggies that I get for um, snacks that are reusable. Fill them with almonds, fill them with grapes, with carrots and hummus, with, you know, little tomatoes, with whatever makes you happy, celery sticks and peanut butter, but make sure that you are having control of what you're bringing in to your body as well, because that's truly important to your health uh, going forward. So those are like my 10 tips for you on how you might be able to have a little bit more control of what you're putting into your body. And again, no crazy fat diets, those work temporarily, but unless you can keep up with it, it's not worth it. Pick up some of these tips and make sure that you make some changes so that you can be healthier and take good care of yourself this year. So thank you so much for listening again. Carmen Carrion, coach of the Happy Balanced Life, and I'm here for any tips, questions that you might have, please leave them below. And if you like what I've said so far or any other video of mine, please subscribe and follow for more information. Have a blessed night.